Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Good morning, folks. Uh, welcome to uh, RMA in Kansas. My name is Dr. Ignacio Ampiti. I'm a cropping system specialist uh, working in row crops here at K-State. And today I would like to talk about, I mean, the crop schools. If you recall the last previous weeks, we were talking about the corn schools and the soybean schools. So today is the turn to talk about the sorghum schools. Sorghum schools are a, a very successful event and it's a continuation, I mean, of um, several years, I would say probably even more than five years that we are conducting those sorghum schools. Always highly successful, always we have every year around close to 400 people attending to those schools. We're always trying to move around the state and trying to go to different locations. So usually the schools will start 9 o'clock in the morning. We are looking to have everyone, if possible, there 15 minutes before for registration and to make sure that we start the school at 9. And then we are trying to finalize with lunch included around uh, 2.30 or 3 p.m., which will include also a farmer panel at the end with the idea to have more interactions and more discussions about what are the worries and the farmers are, uh, things that they are concerned about sorghum production and, and things that they are concerned about, I mean, the future of the sorghum production. So Tuesday is our first day, Tuesday, February 2nd. That is our first location on the western side. First location is in Scott City. Um, we have a location there two years ago, very successful schools. So we hope to see you, uh, all farmers and people are up, uh, down there just to make sure that we have another event. I mean, successful as we have in the 2014. The idea is in Scott City, focus on topics specific to Southwest. Uh, we will talk about limited irrigation sorghum. We will talk about iron chlorosis. We will talk about sugar cane aphids. So as you see, those topics are very specific for that area. But the idea and the goal is to provide updates, information, everything working, I mean, around the case state. I mean, College of Ag and Agronomy Department to make sure that we can provide that information to all farmers. From there, we are moving to our second location, I mean, in the state. And in that location that week, we are going to, uh, on Wednesday, February 3rd, to Phillipsburg. Again, that location will be more to cover the north, western side of the state, and north central section of the state. And the idea is to make sure that we have a school focused on specific topics, We'll be talking about, again, limited irrigation in some areas, but also we'll be focusing a little bit more on the uh, disease and we, some other things and issues that we have this year on sorghum standability, uh, Fusario and Charco Road. The third location is on, on Thursday, February 4th, and it will be in Ellsworth. And that location is trying to cover the central section of the state. And the idea is very similar. We will be including some future topics. I mean, again, we will have maybe an, an hour of presentation, as mentioned before, on the weed control side, which we believe that is, is one of the main critical topics that we have from last year, and also one hour on the sugar, uh, sugar cane aphid. So those are the two main things that we are emphasizing, but also we are yeah, increasing the number of presentations and adding more kind of a short topics so we can increase the variety of topics that we can offer and also information that we can provide to sorghum farmers. Last day of um, uh, the sorghum schools is of uh, Friday, February 5th, and it's in Emporia. We were having a lot of questions last summer of people working and trying to, con I mean, improve and uh, or produce sorghum in some sections in the east eastern side of the state and even southeast section of the state. So we are trying to make sure that we, can, we are still relevant for those farmers that are going back to sorghum. So that's the idea of that school is to make sure that we have some school in that area to be relevant for farmers that they are thinking uh, in producing sorghum for the next coming years. In Emporia, again, very similar topics with very highly qualified presenters uh, from uh, Dr. Dan O'Brien, Bill Golden in the western side, um, irrigation specialists. We have uh, Kurt Thompson as our week, uh, specialist on, uh, for weed control strategies. Also, he will be talking about new strategies and new different type of uh, news on the weed control side. So stay tuned to all that information because it will be very good information. We also have some new information about production practices that we were developing in the last two years. So we'll be giving some kind of a short summaries of 
what are the best production practices and what are the things that we should be targeting in the next coming years in order to increase those sorghum yields at least from 5 to 10 bushes and trying to bump, I mean, revamp, I mean, those sorghum yields, I mean, in some areas of the state. Um, high reselection, economics, so those are most of the feature topics that we will be planning to cover in all the schools. Again, if you are looking for information about specifically dates and locations, so you can put in your calendars, make sure that to stay tuned to the e-updates. It's at www.agronomy.ksu.edu. Then you go inside of the, our website and then you get to the right side and then you'll see a tab is called e-updates. Inside of that tab e-updates, you will see every Friday afternoon all information related to new production issues and also information related to extension events like these ones, I mean our crop winter schools. Online registration will be available immediately almost in the next coming weeks and also you will be able to register just calling you to the extension, your extension office. I'm a patient of the Kansas Regenerative Medicine in Manhattan. I had uh, stem cell therapy in my hips and my left knee. My wife and I uh, both are patients. We went down there the same day in November. Since then, uh, my hips are feeling a lot better. I can, can work now most of the day if I want to. And uh, before, if I, if I worked in the morning, I was done in the afternoon. Or if I worked in the afternoon, um, I was sure enough done for the rest of the day.